Congratulations on your purchase of the HQ2 by Handy Quilter. This product has revolutionized the home machine quilting industry. Now you can do all of your quilts at home. Not only do you have the ability to choose the design that you want, you don't have to send your quilts out anymore, but you can pick the threads and the designs that are on those quilts. Anytime a machine is machine quilted, it's more durable and lasting. These quilts can be machine washed and there's not anything that you can't do with the home machine quilting system that um, can't be done by hand quilting or even the long arms. We can do the same things that the long arm quilters do and the hand quilters do. Any of those designs are totally transferable to this home machine quilting system. I'll be showing you how to put the frame together. We'll be showing you some basic quilting techniques. So let's get started. First of all, we have all the parts that came in the HQ2 box out here on this table. First thing that you've noticed is that this track is not flat, and it needs to be flat. So what, all you need to do is take the whole, I, I like to take both of them at the same time, just turn them around, and force them back the other way. And you want to do a nice, big, round, gentle turn. You don't want to take it in little pieces and try to try to bend it backwards. So I'm going to really bend this and hold it for a second or two and relax it. And the tracks are almost flat now. What you don't want to do is um, you don't want to take this and start doing it in little sections like this and really bending it. Then you're going to get some, some uh, roller coaster effect on that and you don't want that. So we're going to take it if we don't like the way it is, we're going to re-bend it again. This is a really good isometric exercises. And we're going to bend this, get it so that it's nice and flat. Okay, looks like it's about there. Just the weight alone will help it flatten out. So now they're laying down a little bit better. When you get the machine on it and in a warm room, it will also uh, help that just flatten out so it's perfectly straight. I've cleared the table off and we're ready to, s to stick the tracks to the table. Uh, if you'll notice in your packaging you've got this spool of double stick tape and you don't need to run the whole length of the tape down the tracks. I just like to take little one inch pieces and um, space them about every 12, 15, 20 inches apart and just stick them on the back side of the track and only set it on, on one, one track. You don't need to put it on both of them. Something else I like to use on these tracks, uh, sometimes if this sits for a while, it has a tendency to get gummy on your table and the tracks. Um, silly Putty Works and also that poster stick tack stuff that you can stick papers and posters to the walls that it's kind of a gummy tacky stuff. It's like Silly Putty, only it's got a little bit more stick to it. I like to use that. That leaves no residue at all. So I'm cutting off these little one inch chunks or half inch, whatever. I'm just sticking it on here. Then I'll go back and peel the paper off all of these. And I'm ready to stick it on the table. This um, track that I'm working on right now is going to be the track that's closest to me, closest to the back of the machine. And when I say back of the machine, that's the part of the machine where the, the power cord comes out. The front of the machine is where the needle is. So when I refer to front and back, that's what I'm talking about. So I've peeled all this paper off. And I'm going to stick it to the table. Now I've got this tracks a little bit longer than what I need. So I'm going to just let it hang off one end. I'm putting this track about oh, an inch, inch and a half from the edge of my table getting it as straight as I can. Don't want it to be bowing or anything that might cause some binding later on. So now it's stuck to my table. And now I'm ready to line this up. So I'll take my carriages and the other track. And the carriages are going to tell me where to place these tracks, how far apart they go. I'm going to put the wheels on the track, make sure that they're exactly on there. Roll this back and forth. Pull my track out. And now if I want to, if I have a, 
and a lot hanging off the edge like I do here, I'm maybe going to take one or two pieces of this tape and just tack it down so I have some control. Stick it under this end. Before I stick it down, I'm going to bring my carriage over here and push it down and stick it down. And peel the backing off of it. Stick it down here. Okay, and these, this carriage guides it so that it'll stay lined up. And it looks like that's about all I need to hold that down. I kind of like one of my tracks to float a little bit so that it has a little bit of give. Now we're ready to put the side arms on. With the tracks and the carriage secured to the table, now we're ready to put on the side arms. And these are literally side arms. They go on the side and the arms go on them. So we can set um, one of these up on each side. And I'm just going to lay this one down so it won't tip over. On the left, there's latches. They go on the left side. And if you'll notice, there's Velcro on this outside edge. It has to be on the outside of the table. And if you'll notice, on this uh, right side arm, there's Velcro on the outside of that edge, too. So they go on the outside. So I need to put in some uh, screws. And the screw goes in this direction, as if it were on the, the frame. And it's threaded, so you're just going to have to take a couple of seconds here and just thread it in and get it tight. The plastic. You don't need a screwdriver or any tool. This just threads in real easy by hand. I have inserted this screw and screwed it into the side, the side arm, the, the plastic side arm. And if you'll notice, there's Velcro on this side. There's also a groove in here, and the screw end is coming out this end. That's how you can tell this is all going the right direction. I'm going to lay this down, and this needs to be stabilized. It's kind of all over the place here. So I'm going to put the back of this L-shaped bracket against the edge of the table, and I'm going to make sure it's not doing this. I want it to be exactly parallel to the table. So I've got this edge butted up, and I've got this edge all straight and parallel. I'm going to loosen this with this lever right here. I can squeeze it and it relaxes it. Okay, it's released. Then I'm going to hang on to that and push it up tight against the table. And with the wooden handle, I'm going to make sure everything's plumbed up here. And I'm tighten that up. And now this is all stabilized. Now let's put the side arm on. Okay, we've got the Velcro on the outside. I'll grab a screw uh, handle over here. And it goes on the end of this screw. I'm going to make sure that this is not going like this. It's going to be into that groove. So we want to follow the groove up and down. And put this tightener on and we're ready to go. Now let's do the same thing on the other side or the left side. When I mean left, I'm orienting myself to the back of the machine where the cord comes out of the back of the sewing machine. And so I'm, I'm in the back of the table. This is my left side, and I've got the latches with the screw head. And on the other side, I've got the groove, the screw's coming out, and once again, the Velcro is showing. That goes to the outside. So let's put the bracket on. And once again, all I have to do is line it up, squeeze the little metal adjuster here, and I'll just put it over here on the side again like I did on the other side. I'm going to tighten it up with the, the hand tight, the wooden handle here. And that side's ready to go. So now I'm going to thread the screw through the slot, make sure that the arm is into that groove so it doesn't want to tilt. Take the black knob and just tighten this down. Um, you'll notice I'm not adjusting this vertically any direction. I don't have my machine on here to adjust that yet, so I'm just tightening it up to whatever I want. We're ready to put the poles on at the frame, but before we do that, let's make sure we've got everything on correct and that everything's oriented correctly to the table. Um, we have the carriage 
is on the tracks. This track is floating. There's not very much tape on it. There's a lot, you know, a lot of tape on this one, maybe 10, 12, 15 inches, whatever you need. We put the side arms on each side of the table. On the left side, as I'm standing on the back of the table where the cord will be coming out of the machine, that is the left side, and I have the latches looking at the inside of the table, the Velcro looking at the outside of the table. And as I move over to the right side of the table, as I'm standing on the back, uh, the Velcro's on the outside, and also the black knobs are on the outside. But I want you to know something over here. We've got the tracks. They're just kind of hanging out here. You can leave those tracks hanging if you, if you want to. There's not a problem with the system. It won't hurt anything, other than it's kind of hard to get around the table and causes kind of a, a hazard. So all you have to do is take a hacksaw, and while this is all clamped down here tight to the table, you can just hacksaw those sides off and discard those tracks, or you can save them and butt them up to, the, to this existing track if you want to put a longer table, a longer system on. And so you'll be able to uh, use some more tape and stick it down. Now another option, if you don't want to take these leftover pieces and butt them together, you can also order the tracks in 6, 8, and 10 foot lengths if you need those. Personally at home, I just have mine set up as long as it will go. That way I know it fits anything I've got. But if you don't have the room for that and you need to use it in smaller pieces, like maybe you're going to guild meetings or you're going to your cabin, and you need those different sizes, we have those available. The table I have here is an 8-foot table, so I'm going to use um, two 4-foot sections per pole. Now, if I had a 6-foot table, I'd use a 4-foot and a 2-foot that's in the box. So this can go in any increments that you need. Um, so I have a sprocket and then a plain pole, and the little push buttons need to be pushed in. And then I just kind of twist it and work it till it goes all the way in, and now that one's ready. And we have one pole, as you notice, with the black grip on it, and the other two don't have the black grip. And we'll be showing you where to put that, because that's important that that goes in the right position. Okay, wiggling it until that pops out. We're ready to put the Velcro on the pipes. They're all assembled and they're all locked in. Um, this black pipe with the spongy handhold, that goes into the back part of the frame where there's just a single hole. Notice I'm putting the pipe in first and then the sprocket end in second pushing the snap button down and relaxing it and letting it go in and now for the last one and one thing you need to do is be sure that this latch is lifted up and then the pop button put in it then it engages the latch notice on this one I forgot to do that so all I have to do is push in the pop button take it out flip that back over push it back down and now, when I turn this, it only turns one way on both of them. Okay, let's put on the Velcro. I'm going to start from this uh, black hand grip. I'm going to stick it down and about two or three inches and pull it. And I can eyeball. There's kind of some little grooves where the aluminum is extruded out of the the mold, and um, you can kind of line it up with that, and just kind of pull it tight, and it keeps it straight. They don't need to measure this and chalk it out or anything. Just need to get it as straight as you can, and then. I'll just cut it off. And right here where the seam is, I like to take my little scissors and trim that so that when I go to take these poles apart, they just come apart. You can use a craft knife or something else if you want to do that. And I accidentally taped over my little pop button here, so I'll just cut around that and make sure everything's secure. So Next time I do this, I'm not, I, this pop button's, I'm going to make sure it's down so I don't tape over that. 
Okay, I'm going to set this back about five, six inches. Just put the Velcro back in. Um, the machine can't quilt clear out to the edges anyway, so there's no sense in having the Velcro clear to the edges. Stick that down. You notice I ran out of Velcro, so I'm just going to butt up the next piece to it. And do the same thing. Just a couple of inches where it's tacked down tight to the pipe, and then I can pull against it and get that on straight. If you want to have the Velcro go clear out to the outside edge of this pipe, you can. There's enough room in this hole where the pipes go that it, there, it will allow space for the Velcro. That way when you hook your next pipe on, it'll already have the Velcro there. Okay, once again, I'm going to take my scissors and trim that so that I can get these apart. And I'll continue on with my last pull. The next step is either loading the quilt or putting the machine on. I like to put the machine on because I just leave it there all the time and then I get used to learning how to load the quilt with the machine on the frame. But this is not an exact science. If you want to load everything before, you can. Um, it's easier to do it before um, for another reason. See, I can shove this pipe all the way out and get it out of the way. If my quilt's wrapped on that pole, I won't be able to do that. So turn the machine around and pull the pipe back through. Push the button, engage the latch. And now, my machine won't fall off the table, so I'm always sure to get that pipe as quickly as I can underneath the neck of that machine and, and latched into the sidearm. Now we're ready to uh, load our quilt and put our leaders on. The leaders that came with your HQ2 are already surged and the Velcro is already applied to those, so they're just ready to go. All you need to do is decide how long that leader needs to be. Now the leaders are really important. I have um, people asking me every once in a while, why, why do we need the leader? Um, you want to you want to pin your quilt to this piece of fabric. You don't want to um, tape your quilt to this pole or Velcro your quilt directly to this pole. You want to have something that will be a carrier for that quilt. Now I've, I've Velcroed this on all the way across. And if you'll notice, I've got more fabric than I need. So I'm going to go to the edge and just kind of mark it with my finger and clip it and tear it till I get to the surged part and just cut through that. And now I'm ready to finish Velcroing this on here. Now the Velcro is kind of a neat system because you can't get it on uh, wrong. You just flip the Velcro over if it's if you've got it on upside down or backwards. If you have a zipper system, that's a little bit more picky on how that goes on because the zippers are very directional and the Velcro's not. So once again, I'm going to mark my quilt. And if you can remember to put the leader between the poles when you do this part, it'll automatically be on the right. You won't have to flip your Velcro upside down. And just keep Velcroing this across. And we'll go over here to this edge again. We're going to decide where it needs to go and trim it. Notice I wear scissors around my neck. You can save over 20% of your quilting time and loading time by wearing your scissors. That's, that's how much time that we figured you waste looking around, stopping what you're doing, trying to find your scissors. And that's just that one component. I also wear a pin cushion on my wrist when I get going too, because I don't have to chase that. Okay, this is all rolled up and ready to go. Now, same thing with the last leader. I can start it over here. Notice I put the leader between the poles. And if you don't, it's okay. You can just Roll it the other direction when you start loading your quilt. Okay, 
and everything's between the poles. Notice I rolled this one up before I started the next one. It just keeps things tidy and keeps the fabric from getting tangled up and mixed up and all that other stuff. Now this only rolls one way. If I don't know which way to roll it, the latches will tell me it won't go. So you can't get it on wrong. Okay, we're ready to pin on a quilt. Before we pin on the quilt, the cameraman said he didn't get it, what I was talking about, on the leaders and how it doesn't matter how they go on. So I'm going to undo one of these and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Let's say that I've I'm just, I, um, I'll take this off and I'm just going to be loading these, this leader onto my poles. And you know how I told you that it was best to put the leader down in here first, but if you didn't, it was okay. So I'm going to show you what, what I mean by it's okay. Let's say you didn't put it down in between the poles first and you just loaded it out here on the outside edge and just load it on, engage my latch. And here we go. So now, when you go to roll this up, of course you're going to think it's going to roll this way, but it won't because the latch won't let it. So all you have to do is just roll it the other way. The Velcro doesn't care, and you're still fine. Do you understand that, cameraman? Okay, now we're going to go on to loading our quilt. He said he understood. Here we go. We've got the back and We've got the top of my quilt. And what I want to make sure is that I've got both of these going like this. I don't want one of them going like this, because when you start out, it looks good. But then you're going to run out of fabric. So let's make sure that these are all oriented the right direction. And all you have to do is walk around two sides. And see, these are all just thrown together. We don't know which end's the longest, which end's the shortest. You don't need to just lay this out on the floor and go to a lot of work crawling around trying to get these all lined up. So I'm going to walk it across. Walk both of these pieces across. Okay, this is good. I've got extra back. You always have to have extra back. And now I'm going to walk down the other side and just get these edges together. So now I'm going down the long or the short way, not sure which way it is because I didn't measure it. I'm just walking it down. And look, I've got plenty on the bottom side. So now I know I have, I've got plenty of distance all the way around this quilt. And now I need to say, well, hmm, I can quilt this with the quilt running the long way or the quilt running the short way because there's a long side and a short side on each quilt. So generally, I like to have the quilt running the long way on the pole, so that means I don't have to roll my quilt as often. But if I don't have enough room on my frame, I can run it the other direction. So I'm going to put a pin between all the layers here so they stay together. And I'm going to determine which end is the longest without measuring it and calling on the floor and all that kind of stuff. So I've got my corner right here, and I'm going to take the top and the side and just walk it down here and see, okay, this is my long side. So I could lay it on my frame and see if this is going to fit, decide which direction I'm going to lay my quilt. And this is really good. I can lay it the long way. So now I'm going to take my pin out that I put in here to hold all these areas together and I need to orient the quilt to itself. So I need to put a pin in here. I'm going to weave the pin so it doesn't want to come out because if I don't weave it, it'll just fall out. Weave a pin into the back. So now I have the pieces all marked. Now I can just set this down. I don't care if it gets all scrambled up. I don't care if the phone rings and I forget where it is because I've got that pin to permanently mark the direction that that's going to be pinned to the rollers. So now I'm going to um, put my quilt. OK, 
Okay, here's my pin, so I know I'm going the right direction. Lay it all the way up here and smooth it out. And if you'll notice, I've got a seam running down right here, and I'm going to show you some things that happen when you've got extra bulk on your quilt. Um, usually I would take this quilt and I'd find center, which I already know this is center because there's this is just two pieces of cloth sewn together. I would find that and I'd find center on my leader and you can take a tape measure to that leader or you can um, fold it in half and find center. But for today, um, I don't need to worry about that because I've got a huge quilt on here that I'm going to be able to see exactly where I'm going. But generally speaking, if you have a smaller quilt, you're going to have to make sure you have all your plumb lines so that they're, they're uh, loaded on the, quilt on the quilter straight. Okay, I've got my, all my weight and all the bulk of this quilt going over the rollers. This is a couple of good things to keep in mind keeping this quilt over all the rollers because you can look at this quilt and the quilt back and you'll notice this is the back. I've got the wrong side of the fabric looking up. This is the right side. The right side's looking at the floor. I'm going to be pinning it to the bottom roller and this is a good idea having it over the rollers because you can keep track of loose pins, threads, um, maybe you've got some seam problems. This is a really good way to keep track of what's going on. Okay, now I'm going to walk around the machine and I'm going to start pinning onto the roller. I'm starting to pin from the center out, or just in the center area, you don't have to be really exact about that. But notice that I'm letting a little bit of my quilt hang up over the edge so I can make sure that I've caught it. Um, so just a little tiny bit. Also notice that the pins are right exactly into that outside edge. I don't want to have a great big huge uh, seam allowance, because what happens is this pin turns it into a seam allowance. Now what happens is I've lost this much quilting, plus it folds over here, so I've lost this much quilting space because I took such a huge bite. So keep those bites small. Make sure the heads of the pins are to the point of the next pin so that you don't have any gaps, so that when there gets to be tension on the poles, you don't want any scalloping and pulling. We're going to pin like this all the way to the edge of the this is the quilt back, to the edge of the quilt back. And the other thing I notice when we do our workshops is um, people are doing this. They have this huge pin and they, they just take a little tiny bite. So you must use up all that pin. That's what it's here for. Help us save some time. Also, there's always someone that does this in class. They, they want to weave it. And you know, that's a really good, secure, tight way to pin. But it wastes a lot of time and this quilt isn't going anywhere. It's just going to be laying here on this roller. There's not going to be that much pulling on it that we're going to have to worry about lacing or weaving that pin through the fabric. Just about finished with my pinning here, but I thought I'd ex uh, explain a little bit about this pin. This is just a flower pin or a corsage pin. They're nice and sharp. They're long. And um, I've tried T-pins. They have a tendency to leave holes in my quilts. Not all of them have sharp points, but these all have nice sharp pins points. They're designed to go into clothing and they just work really well and they're very inexpensive. We're ready to start rolling up our quilt back. We've got it all pinned on and you'll notice that we've got these are nice and straight in here. They're parallel to the roller and I've got my latch down so that if I turn it the wrong way it won't let me turn the wrong way. So I'm going to start rolling. Now this is just really very important that this quilt be out across all the rollers. Uh, in our workshops, we have a tendency to see people forget this step and just let it lay on the floor. First of all, you're picking up a lot of product off the floor, thread, pins, papers, whatever's down there. And that gets rolled up into your quilt and then quilted. And also, the weight of the quilt is dragging unevenly and you're going to start getting the quilt back unevenly wound. So just make sure it's up here so you can keep an eye on it. Now you notice the seam is in here and it's going to start causing me some huge problems if I don't do something about it. If I just keep continually rolling this up and not paying attention to this seam, you can start seeing there's getting to be some diagonal lines in here and it's starting to pull. 
By the time I get this rolled up and finished, I'm going to have a big scoop mark right in there where the, where the seam was, because this is a lot of bulk in here. So all I have to do is pull against that, tighten just that section up, and start rolling. You see how that relaxed it? Starting to do it again, so I'm going to pull up on it. Notice I'm pulling, I'm pushing just sideways. If I start doing this and pulling it, I'm going to have a very unevenly rolled quilt. So be sure that you smooth it out sideways. And with a nice soft hand, don't have a heavy hand on it. It's going to cause a lot of drag and distorting of the quilt. So I'm going to pull it again. And by the way, this does not need to be wound on here like in a tourniquet. It's just cloth rolled up on a carrier roller. So don't try to cinch it up. You're going to stretch the, the quilt out of shape. The only part we want to stretch is just this seam. We're smoothing it, keeping everything nice and even. I'm going to maybe pull this a little bit more and make sure it's nice and smooth. Okay. Now we're all finished. Okay, to review this, we're going to roll this up. And you'll notice when we get through, we don't have a little scallopy dip thing in here because we've counter pulled this against itself to keep it straight. And this edge is even all the way across. Now, one thing you want to look for is over here on this end of the pole, you can see that the fabric is evenly stacked. It has not telescoped. It's not going one direction or another. Uh, it's all evenly layered on, on both edges. That's a good sign, unless your fabric's off grain or you've got some problems. But that should generally be nice and stacked and straight. If it's not, you'll have to unwind it and wind it up again. If you've got a fold or a wrinkle in here, that will telescope into a bigger problem towards the end. So make sure everything's flat and smooth as you roll it onto the rollers. Okay, now, with this all rolled up, we're ready to load the top of the quilt, which is rolled, which is done exactly the same way, and we're going to pin it onto this leader. Here's my quilt top that I just threw on the floor. I probably should have hung it up to keep it nice and wrinkle-free. But as I look through my quilt, here's the pin. Now I know, I know that that's, that's the end that goes to the roller, on, pins to my leader. Once again, throw the quilt out across all the rollers. You want it to be flat and straight. You can look for any problem areas. And if I was pinning this to my leader and making sure it was right in the center, I would fold it and take out this pin and put it in the center position. Then if my leader had a center mark on it, then I would match that center mark to this, to this, to the quilt, and I would start pinning. But once again, I've got some, a really huge back to this quilt, so I have a little bit of leeway. I don't have to be as exact, I, and it's a smaller quilt, so I can just kind of eyeball it on here, make sure I have enough on each edge, and enough, I can see I have enough backing, so that I'm ready to go. Now notice that when I start pinning, I'm always pinning with the pins against the leader. I'm not pinning with the pins against the, the fabric of the quilt. And the reason we do that, and I'll show you here, is first of all, the wear goes against the leader and not onto your, your quilt. If there's any problems with the pin, if you had maybe pinned something that was maybe you're pinning through fabric that you had been coloring with crayons or something like that, the, all the crayon will get uh, scrubbed off as it goes into the leader and not onto your quilt. It's just kind of a good safety measure. But the main reason that we do this is so that when it comes time to unpin this, when the tension gets on here, these pins are floating on the top and it's easy to take them off. If you had pinned in here, you'd be having to dig those pins out underneath of your quilt. So on all all the rollers, all the time, you always put the pins against the leader. There's no exception to that rule, no matter if you're loading it onto the take-up roller or just rolling, rolling it onto these, to the leaders. 
the pins always go against the leader. And I'll finish pinning this on and we'll roll it up. I've got the quilt top pinned on and I remember to lay it over all the rollers. Just Right now it's just the take up roller that's going over and I'm rolling it up. Now one thing I want you to watch is see how these seams that are in my piece top act as plumb lines so I can constantly keep track on every roll and make sure that that's rolling up evenly. If it's not and I see an area that maybe that is starting to twist and I can see it right here it's starting to go maybe down a little bit there. All I have to do is just kind of pull up on that or pull on the quilt out here. Kind of give it a little extra tug to get those seams laying the right way. Okay, that straightened that out. But you're going to have to kind of work with this a little bit because all of these seams have a tendency. Okay, now you can see it's starting to go down right here. And it's also telescoping over here, which is telling me I've got some problems, so I'm going to scoot everything over there and even that up. And notice how it straightened out that line. So I'm going to roll it up some more, checking this edge. And it's okay to kind of pull it and give it a little help. This edge is telescoping again. I'm going to just push it over there, kind of pulling it this way to make that seam lay flat on the roller. Okay, here's my final checkpoint. Still wanting to dip down a little bit there. I'm going to push it over there. Um, some things that could cause that is, even if this side border is maybe off an inch or two, it'll, it'll of course make one side of your quilt longer than the other. And you can compensate for that by just helping it with your hands, just kind of help manipulate that into a straight line so it stays square. When you start quilting it, you can ease in two or three inches of extra fullness into those quilts by just keeping this square and forcing the fullness to where it needs to go on your when you start quilting it with the machine. All right, now we're ready to put on the batting. I'm using a cotton poly bat. It's a Hobbs heirloom. It's 80 cotton, 20 poly. That's my favorite bat. It uh, doesn't matter what you use. But what you need to remember is you don't want to spring load this bat. A lot of people have maybe rolls of polyester bat underneath their machine and they just want to pull it out and have it feed off of the, the roller. But the problem with that is it, put, it, it puts tension onto that quilt bat. So I always pre-cut my bat. I always cut it a couple of inches bigger than my quilt top. And you just lay in between the rollers. Make sure it's visually centered. And uh, usually about this time is I try to vacuum up the floor or take one of those stiff brushes to it to get all the loose threads up because I don't want those caught in my bat. The bat cannot be draped across the rollers like we did with the quilt top and the quilt back. So you have to take some precautions with that. Now when I come over here to my latches onto the side, um, those need to be released because I need to be able to relax these, the ratchets so I can unwind the quilt. And I just put a piece of double stick tape over here I didn't take the plastic top off of it, I just left it. And I can just, it just creates resistance for those latches just to stay parked. Um, usually I don't do that, I'm used to just hanging on with one hand and pulling with the other. But it's a little bit easier if you're not experienced with that to just take the fabric. It's all relaxed over there. The latches have been, have stayed up so we can pull the quilt through. I've got the, the quilt top, the quilt batting, and the back. I've all been pulled through all at once. Now, there's a couple of ways to load this quilt. Um, you want to pull the leader out towards the center of the frame, and you can find all your centers, find the center of the back, center of the top, layer them all together and making sure there's no diagonal lines, everything's floating like it belongs. Pull your leader to the center and once again pin with the pins against the leader and pin from the center out and you can pin all the layers together all the way across um, rolling everything up and start your quilting. But the way I like to to do my quilts is floating the quilt top. That way I can get right up to the outside edge, the cut edge of this the quilt top and it does a nicer job. So what I'll do is I'll peel the top layer off 
Now all I have is the back and the batting. I'm going to center that onto my leader. And uh, there's quite a discussion on pinning to this end of the, of the frame because I've had problems with some of my quilts. Even when I have forced it to go center, I have a center on my quilt top, I have a center on my leader, and I match them up, and they actually start looking like this. There's some pulling. So I have got to the point where I just visually make sure everything's flat and straight, and then I start pinning it on. Uh, rather than trying to force it to center, because sometimes these quilts are like a trapezoid. They're not square. <laughs> so, if we let it go the way it wants to a little bit, and then force in the rest of the fullness, we come out with more square quilts. So here I am, pinning along just like I did before, on the, against the leader. I have a little bit of my quilt back showing above the top of my leader, so I can make sure I'm, I'm catching it, and I don't have any uh, loose. Sometimes some of these fabrics are so ravelly, if I don't have a little bit hanging out, it'll just pull through the pin. I'm pinning my batting and my back together. You don't have to. You can uh, let the bat float back with the quilt top. But the reason I pull that batting through with everything is this batting is so fragile sometimes, uh, depending on what kind you buy. Some of them are thinner, especially the, the thin polyesters. If you don't pull it through with the sandwich, then you're pulling the batting through by itself, and it will start to shred, and you'll get some holes in it where your hands have literally pulled it and stretched it through. So having it um, against the back of the quilt acts as a carrier, and it helps pull that batting through evenly and unstretched. So I'm going to continue pinning across the back of this quilt, the backing and the leader and the batting, and then I'll show you how to load the top. I finished pinning the quilt back and the batting to the leader. One thing I want you to notice is that, okay, the leader's going to the center like we talked about. We brought it back this way, but notice that my back is straight, that I walked around the machine to do the take-up roller. This is the take-up roller that goes under underneath of the machine. This is really important to make that extra step to walk around the machine and stand up straight as you're pinning. As I was pinning on the loading the top and the back rollers, I was standing on that on the other side of the machine so that my back was straight. Um, you can get a lot of pain and uh, a lot of bad backs keeping your back torqued the wrong direction. So keep that in mind. Okay, now I'm going to release my latch and so that I can only roll it one way. All my latches are engaged. And I've got to make sure that this is rolling on straight and that I don't have any wrinkles or any problems in my leader, which this one's trying to do. So I'll, I'll relax this a little bit, back wind it, find out what's going on here. Looks like I have a problem down at this end. Okay, it's got to be flat and nice and smooth. Okay, re engage my latch. Slowly roll it up, checking, making sure everything's straight. I'm moving my hand sideways across the cloth. I'm not pulling it in any one direction. And, okay, looks like this is rolled on straight. This is all smoothed on, and it's, the pins are pretty much parallel with the roller. If they're not, I'm going to tug on it and make sure they are. Make sure everything's straight and nice. Now I'm ready to start on the back of the quilt. And I'll put that latch down and I really should be walking around the machine so that my back isn't bent. I'm getting this all straightened out. Okay, and it's pretty tight. And now, I'm going to pull up my quilt top and make sure that it's flat against the roller and there's not any pleats or folds. And smoothing it out, now I'm going to roll it up, making sure that it stays, that all the seams stay parallel to the roller. And we've got a problem over here. And got some lines over here. 
I'm going to pull it out flat and straight. Now at this point, um, I'm going to take some pins and pin them about, oh, and I don't know, an inch or so back away from this cut edge of the quilt top. I'm just going to stabilize this. It's floating here on my batting in my back, and I want to make sure that it doesn't get away from me because I'm going to be machine basting this down here in just a sec. So I'm making sure that it's straight. And if you have a border that's stretched and you get all this fullness in here, don't keep scooting it to the end. Put the fullness where it's full and keep it controlled in its own space. Moving it around is not going to take care of the problem. It's got to be dealt with in the area that the fullness was seen. Okay, this has got a little bit close up here. Pin it. Got a seam here. I want to be sure and pin where the seam is because that's a little bit more boardy there. Okay, now tighten up just a little bit. I mean, this is still floating. I don't have a lot of tension on it. And if you'll notice, there's a lot of distance between the bed of the machine and the roller, and there cannot be that much distance. What happens is the foot starts going up and down, starts what we call flagging the quilt, starts bouncing it, and you start losing control. So that's why we have these adjusters over here. You need to lower this down to the point that you can just get your fingers to barely go underneath this pole. And I've got too much room, so I'm going to down a little bit lower. Okay. I can barely get my fingers between the bed of the machine and the pole, so that's a really good distance. So now, I need to move my machine down to the other end, because this is my gauge. Move it down. And I've got lots of room on this side, so let's lower it. Put my fingers under there. Okay, that's good. I'll tighten it up. Now, remember, as you start quilting and the fullness starts building up here, be sure you keep checking that. Go down, take the machine to each end, and make sure that you still have enough room to keep your fingers underneath of the, the roller. That way, you don't have any drag and, and distorted stitching. Okay, now, I'm going to base the quilt to the back of the of the quilt, the quilt backing and the batting. Let's put another pin over here just to keep this anchored down. I'll press your foot up and I'll put it down. Be sure you always keep that presser foot down. You're going to get some really loopy bad stitches if you don't. Now I'm just using a foot pedal here and I want you to just stand on that. So what I'm going to do is um, do a little bit of a serpentine stitch. These clamps came in your kit, and they're designed to stabilize the side of the quilt. Just clamp it on and feed the Velcro through the slot, and it just sticks to the outside edge here. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be pulling this so tight that it actually starts pulling and distorting the side of the quilt. This is just a stabilizer. And notice I'm only pinning to the back of the quilt. I'm not pinning to the top of my quilt. I don't want to pull that out out of shape either. Now let's put it on the other side. Same process. Clamp it to the back of the quilt and the batting if you want to, but you don't usually ever clamp it to the to the top of the quilt for the distortion reasons. Okay, now we're going to start stitching. Before we start stitching, let's bring up that bobbin thread. I've got a white thread on here so it's kind of hard to see, but I think we can make this work. Um, can you see the bobbin thread? I just rotated the hand wheel down and then back up, and here's my bobbin thread. This is just the same procedure as when you're using your regular domestic sewing machine. Okay, I'm going to hang on to these threads with my left hand, and I'm going to step on the gas pedal here and do a little tiny wiggle stitch on the outside edge, on the cut edge of the quilt top. And the, it needs to be a small stitch. It needs to be a small, tiny serpentine stitch because uh, we don't want to have to unpick this. We want to have that enclosed in the binding when it comes time to bind the quilt. So here we go.
Now notice that I'm using my left hand to kind of help control this fabric and my right hand is running the machine. It kind of helps keep that fullness under control. stop I move my body I also move the foot with it the stitching is literally coming off the edge of that raw edge so it's just catching it barely Okay, I've stopped. Now I need to bring up my bobbin thread. So I'm going to rotate the hand wheel all the way up, push the machine away. That creates slack on the top and the bottom. I'm going to grab a hold of that top thread, hang on tight. I'm going to rotate the hand wheel back down in the same hole I came out of, or close to it. And I can see that bobbin is starting to pull up, and I'm going to push it away. And there's my bobbin thread. So I'm going to grab the bobbin and the top and a cut close to the base. Now I'm either ready to start sewing or I'm ready to roll, but whatever, that thread is now cut loose from the back. Notice as I'm stippling or any other kind of stitching that I'm going right off the edge of the quilt top. That way when the binding uh, gets put onto the quilt, it encloses all that stitching and there's no ballooning in between where you finish quilting and where the binding starts. You want to have that be one nice smooth transition. Now to stop, I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread and I'm going to push the machine away, grab the top thread, go back down in the same hole, rotate the hand wheel up, push the machine away, and bring up the bobbin thread, pull it till it comes up, clip it close to the base. I'm ready to roll and start working on the center of my quilt, so I'm going to release the side clamps. And it looks like that one's already undone, so now I'm going to release the latches, roll it up to the next section, and put the latches back into the sprockets. I'm going to put some gentle tension on the top of the quilt, gentle tension on the back of the quilt. Piece work always stretches more than solid uh, fabric, so they're going to have a little bit more stretching in here. Maybe it'll take a little bit more tension to get that straightened out. But I want to caution you not to over twist those rollers and stretch your quilt. I've rolled up my quilt and I can see that I've got some really fun areas I could do some really great designs in. So I found this book that had a cute heart design that I really liked and I want to put it on to these triangle areas. So there's a few products out that are just great. And one of them that I like is a press and seal. There's also some regular paper that you can use, that you can sew through. Uh, my doctor's exam paper works really well. That comes on a large roll and you can see through it pretty well. But I like this press and seal because I can see through it really well and it tears away a lot easier than paper. One thing you need to remember is that you've got to use a pen that's water erasable and I like to use Crayola or Rose Art brand kids washable markers and they work really well. This plastic has got enough texture on it that it really grabs the ink and it doesn't beat up. Now the reason I like to use the uh, wash away pens is because when I start stitching through this, which I'm going to do here in a few minutes, when I start stitching through this, the thread grabs the ink and travels it through into the quilt and then when you tear this away you've got a little residue of ink all over in your quilt and it will not ever come out. That's why they call it permanent pen, is because it won't come out. So that's why I like to use the washable stuff. All right, so I can put this anywhere I want on my quilt. Um, down in this corner is 
kind of a fun place. I also have some other triangles in over into this area. I could put it into here. But let's try with this corner over here. So I can either uh, put the heart in this corner and do it with a color thread and then stipple with a background thread to anchor that quilt down so I don't have any ballooning. Or if I wanted to, I could take my marker and I could embellish this existing design by maybe doing some more curls out here to fill that in. So if I wanted to do that, I would probably do this on a piece of tight paper and have the thing all pre-drawn before I get going. But sometimes I like to preview it and look at it and see if that's really what I want. And if I like it, then I'll retrace it and make it even on both sides and go ahead with that design. At this point, I'm going to bring the machine over. Be sure that the press of seal is underneath the presser foot. Find a good place to start and stop my stitching. It's always a good idea to start or stop in an intersection or a point. So here's an intersection. There's some points out here. So I'm just going to uh, start here in this point. I'm going to go needle down, needle up, push the machine away, bring up my bobbin thread, hang on, and then I'm going to start stitching. I finished stitching through the press and seal. Now look how easy this is to pull away. It comes off in just a few seconds. And you can see that in a few places I've got some uh, places where the thread has picked up the ink and that's not a problem. I can just hit it with some water and it'll, it'll disappear. So that's a quick way to put your quilting designs onto your quilts. The second way I like to use to, to load my quilts onto the frame is a method that's becoming very popular and it's a sewing machine based method. In fact, it's my very most favorite way to load a quilt. Um, I, I pre-machine based the leaders to my quilt and I'll show you how I do that. After I load like all three and four and five quilts at a time. I load them onto the leaders and then I hang them on hangers or on some other system to keep my quilts nice and wrinkle free and it's the same principle as pinning the leader to the quilt but this method if you can see here um, the, the quilt is machine basted to the leader and notice that I have basted right in that surged area of the leader so I have a little tiny seam allowance I'm not losing my quilting area by sewing too far away from that cut edge my quilt was a little bit crooked here so I just plumbed my edge of my leader onto this to the pattern of my quilt and I was able to not have to trim that up usually you want to square those up on your cutting boards before you start putting them onto the leaders. So what I've done here is I've got my Velcro edge out here. It doesn't matter which direction that Velcro is upside, upside down or right side up. And you can see I've sewn one edge of my leader to one end of my quilt back and the other leader is sewn to the other edge. And I start once again, I, I find center of my quilt and center of my leader. I sew from inside out, inside out. And I use a very long basting stitch. One thing I like to do is when it comes time to undo the stitching, I don't want to have to use a seam rip or anything else. What I do is on the top of my machine, the top thread on my machine, 
I use a really strong thread, nice, good, sturdy thread. On the bobbin, I use some thread that's just about ready to fall apart. It's really old, or it's a really fine thread. Maybe even use a machine embroidery thread that's a very fragile thread. I put that in the bobbin so that when it comes time to undo this, I just take the top thread and pull it, and the whole thing just pops undone. I don't have to spend any time unpicking. So here I have the, the back of my quilt, and I've got the wrong side up. You can see my seams are on here. That's showing me that's the wrong side. I also have a seam in here that's showing me that's the wrong side. I want to be sure I load it the right way. Same principle applies. You want to have the whole quilt laying across your frame and just start Velcroing onto the poles. And rolling it up. just like the pin method, only I don't have to pin anything, I'm just ready to go. So I roll this all up, and then the next step is putting the quilt top on, and that same principle applies. Let's say that we have rolled all that up on that bottom roller, and now I have one liter sewn to the top of the quilt, and once again I'll I'll Velcro that to the roller, and finding center, Velcro it all the way across, rolling it up, and once again, when this is all rolled up, I'll be able to float this quilt top, just like I did in the pin base method. Same thing, only you don't have to pin it, it's already sewn. So it's a really quick method. The other method that I like to use on small pieces is the old method that we used to use since the beginning of time when we started machine quilting, pushing our quilts through our machines. Um, when I have little pieces, I'll take the back of the quilt and I'll put the batting and the top, just like we used to do with make a quilt sandwich. I put a few basting pins in it and then I can um, Velcro or pin to each of the leaders, just to two of the rollers, and I can quilt it that way. The reason I don't like to pin baste most of my quilts, and it is a quick method, is you've got two dissimilar fabrics working together. You've got a piece top that's usually like needs a lot more tension on it than a solid backing. So when you start to quilt, you're going to have more of a chance of getting some puckers and pleats either in the back or the top, depending on which part of the quilt has the most amount of fullness. So I like to just use that pin base method, the safety pin base method, on little pieces so I can keep control of that fullness. But this machine-based method is my very favorite. Some tips and hints that might make your quilting a little bit easier. There's some other products made that enhance the HQ2. There's a handy handles, and these have one or two cords depending on the make and model of your machine. But you unplug the, the foot pedal, and this plugs into the slot where the foot pedal was. And then you push the stop and start button, and the machine starts and stops. These screws here on the back, there's a template that comes with these that shows you where to drill holes in the back of the carriage. And you just simply mount this to the back of the carriage. And then you can steer your machine from back here. And also have the controls. There's a speed control on here, so you have how fast and how slow the machine's going all mounted on the back. There's been a lot of people that are happy with these. We also want to remind you that this frame is also adaptable to go on the HQ-16 machine so that you're able to quilt the entire distance on this frame with this machine and uh, has front handles and also has back handles so you're able to quilt from the front of the machine, has laser mount uh, posts on it, has two thread masks so you can interchange your threads quickly and um, the speed controls are on the handle, so you don't ever have to take your hands off the machine as you quilt. You, there's also handles on the back of the machine, so if you want to do any pantograph work, work from the back of the machine, any laser light uh, makes it quick and easy to do your quilts. Thank you for purchasing your handy quilter frame, and happy quilting. <laughs>